Actually, we're sitting here in our front yard on a peaceful Friday evening. I got in yesterday from a revival in a city called Carrollton, Georgia. Debbie and I leave tomorrow for two meetings consecutively, uh, one in Rutherfordton, North Carolina, and the other in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, looking forward to these preaching times. So tonight is a recording night. We have a freshwater spring here in our front yard. We found the best way to control it. We got some advice. We built a rock garden. You can see it back there. Uh, some larger stones. We've got a few plants we're nourishing that are supposed to take a lot of water and they do get it here. But it's a lovely addition to, to our home, to our property really. And I thought a good place to have, now get ready, we do not do them as often as we used to, a book hint. Not really a book review as much as a book hint. I, when we got home yesterday, I sat down uh, there in my recliner in the living room here in the house, and I finished the book. I had been reading it this week, and it impacted me so much, impressed me to the degree, I want to share it with you. I would recommend buying a copy and reading it. We are living in a day when America, my country, for most of you, your country, is being infiltrated by socialism. But it's more than that. I see, I see Marxism, the fingerprint of a wicked man of yesteryear called Karl Marx. Communism, if you will, please. It's infiltrated our universities. It has reached our media. And there is no doubt about it. It's in the halls of government of our land. There is an author who has done a thorough study of Karl Marx. K-A-R-L, Karl Marx. Essentially the founder, is that the right word? of atheistic, godless communism. I, I want to tell you about the book, and then I want to tell you about the author of the book. Get ready. Powerful. I'm going to hold it in place there and let you, I trust, let, let me back up so you can get it all. Was Karl Marx a, not a socialist, that he was, was Karl Marx a Satanist? Did he worship Satan? Is communism built more even than on economic principles, spiritual principles? A documented study, and I've read the book, it is that, a documented study written by Pastor He's in heaven now. Richard Wormbrand. Uh, I will hold the book up again in a few minutes. This book is worth studying because I believe, and I think Scripture bears this out, that there is a rise of devil worship, demon worship in this old world. Scripture after Scripture comes to mind. And uh, we need to be aware, Christians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Those are demons, fallen angels, the rulers of the darkness of the spiritual wickedness in high places. And of course, that's Ephesians 6.12. Was Karl Marx a Satanist? That is a very strong 
accusation, but proof. To my estimation, you, you can read the book, proof is in these, let me see, in these 140 pages or so. Now that I have given the book hint, uh, I bought mine through Amazon books, but I'm pretty sure you can get it through a number of book outlets. It is not an expensive book. It does not take that many hours to read it. Who is Richard Wormbrand? He is a godly Christian, a godly pastor who was arrested by the communist and persecuted by the communist because he loved Jesus, because he held that Bible dear and true. I'm going to give a little bit of detail. Born in 1909, 24th of March. Died in 2001, so he's been in heaven a couple of decades. February 17, 2001. He was a Bible-believing, started out as a priest, Lutheran priest, but he was of Jewish descent. In 1948, he had been saved for 10 years. He publicly made this statement, I agree. Communism and Christianity are incompatible. There is a religious theory these days, liberation theology, that tries to link Christianity and communism, but they don't get it from the Word of God. Mm. Wormbrand, after he got saved, preached, listen to this, in bomb shelters, World War II. Rescued Jews from sure, what would you say, from the Holocaust. And as a result, the communists found him, Romania, the nation of Romania, communist at that time, and they put him in jail and they tortured him. They tortured him for his faith. Listen to this. I think he's qualified to write that book. After serving in jail for 14 years, 14 years, he was ransomed. Money means everything to this crowd, materialism, for $10,000. Got out of jail. His colleagues in Romania urged him to leave the country, go. You have your freedom. Work for uh, religious freedom somewhere else. And he did go to Norway and England. And uh, then he ultimately came to America. And he and his wife, her name was Sabrina, dedicated the rest of their lives to helping Christians who were suffering for their faith in countries unfriendly to the gospel. I have said this before. This is becoming more than just a book hint. I, I have said this before. It is estimated conservatively 286 Christians every day die for their faith. I mentioned that when we were studying Hebrews, I believe, some time back. 286 believers today have been either beheaded Stoned to death. Many now crucified, nailed to an old rugged cross till they're dead as Jesus was crucified in mockery, in fact, of 286 a day. Listen to Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 3. Remember them that are in bonds. We are being told to remember our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in bonds, in jail, chained for their faith. Hebrews 13, 3 says, as bound with them. When that part of the Christian body, when that part of the body of Christ hurts, we should all grieve. We should all mourn. And remember them that suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Men like Richard Wormbrand now in heaven 
are to be honored. Fourteen years in jail. Get this. He wrote more than 18 books. 18 books. Most well known of those, I've read it. Tortured for Christ. Tortured for Christ. Christ. Those books have been translated, they tell me, into more than 65 different languages. I, I, I've got to close, but let me... He spent three years in solitary confinement. Three years locked up in a little cell. The cell was 12 feet underground. No lights, no windows. No sound. Even the guards who would give him what little pittance he was, it was granted to eat, they had felt on their shoes so they made no noise when they came. Listen to this. We might ought to take note. He later recounted, this is what he told, he maintained his sanity by sleeping during the day, staying awake at night, and, and that'd just be your biological clock, no windows, and due to his, ex oh my, and here's how he exercised his mind. You'd go, uh, you'd, you'd go crazy otherwise. He composed and then preached a sermon every night. Didn't have the Bible, wouldn't be able to see it if he did. He composed and preached a sermon every single night. Is that not a mind totally dedicated to the Lord? Is that not somebody who can say, as did Paul, for me to live is Christ? Mm, mm, mm. It is, in fact, this may interest some of you. It's not my book hint, but it may, due to his good memory, he was able to recall more than 350 of those sermons. And he included it in his book entitled, I didn't research this book. I don't even know if you can get it with God in solitary confinement. Mm -mm -mm. He was released from prison in 1956 and uh, was warned not to ever preach again. You can't tell a preacher that. There's a fire burning in his bones. And then he was rearrested in 1959 and sentenced to 25 years in jail. He was beaten. He was tortured. That included mutilation, burning his body parts, being locked in a large frozen icebox. His body bore the scars, as did Paul's, of physical torture for the rest of his life. He told and then I'm going to get off of this. He told how they took the bottom of his feet, the soles of his feet, and beat them until the flesh was torn off, painful. The next day they beat him again, all the way to the bone. My heart grieves. He said there were not words to describe the pain. But then he also said, the Lord never left me. Or never for them. The communist regime, no matter the color or flavor in which it comes, hates the Lord Jesus Christ. That book, this will document it all, was Karl Marx, a Satanist. You can only do what you have time and finances to do, but I recommend reading that book. It might help us pray for our country more diligently. It might help us to remember our brothers and sisters who are in jail because they loved the precious Word of God. Book hint was Karl Marx, a Satanist. And if we come to the conclusion this book strongly insinuates and to my uh, persuasion proves he was he was. Oh my. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who stood 
and suffered and stayed strong for the faith. And Lord, if it comes our way, may we do the same. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in our faith and in our work in the Lord. Help us not to be weary in well-doing even today, tonight, this week. Lord, help us to be steady. We love you. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. I am tempted to pray this prayer. I'm fixing to record a meditation, our evening meditations. God, save that soul nearest hell. Save that soul tonight nearest hell. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember this. Readers are leaders. Readers are leaders. But in your reading, I try to read some every week. Uh, uh, support reading for my preaching. Make me a better uh, preacher of the word. But in all your reading, don't ever let anything take the place. Don't ever let anything take the place of that precious book right there. God's holy word. Book him. Book him. Somebody buy it and read it to your prophet.